All right, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor. And in today's video, I'll be showing you guys why I am buying IWMY Defiance ETF in the next year, 2024. This is their Russell 2000 Enhanced Option Income ETF with a distribution rate of about 72% as of 1130, 2023. I'm going to be buying this ETF in the beginning of 2024 after the ex-dividend date because I will get that share price discount and then start to build up my position after that. So I'll show you guys exactly why I am buying this ETF as well. You can see they're doing the same exact strategy as QQQY and JEPY, and I have both of these in my portfolio already, and those are compounding shares nicely every single month. But I do not have IWMY in my portfolio, and a bunch of you are asking me why I don't have this ETF in my portfolio. And now I see that it's a good time for me to buy, and I'll explain that to you guys throughout this video. So you can see their net assets, 51.49 million, and their net asset value has stayed above their open price of $20. I'd like to see that. And after their distribution in the month of December, I will be getting that share price around $20 per share, hopefully. You see they have low shares outstanding, 2.4 million. And you can see they were incepted 10-30-2023. I'll be buying this fund a few months after they started releasing this ETF, and I'm fine with doing so. Like we saw with Kony, buying on the inception date was fantastic purchase. But with this one, I gave it some time, and I believe that these ETFs can go up in value over time it just will be it's just going to be a struggle after paying these massive dividends every single month to recover that share price so I'm going to start a smaller position first and then see exactly where that takes me in the next few months if you want to see since inception this ETF is up 4.89 percent and you can see their total holdings they are doing their option strategies on the Russell 2000 index their first distribution was $1.25 per share, and that was paid out on 12-6-2023, and their next one declaration date is 12-27-2023, and that's going to be paid out next year, 1-4-2024. So I think my entry point will be on either the ex-dividend date or the day after, just before year end, and then I'll continue buying in 2024. If we take a look at the Robinhood portfolio, you can see it is down 1.67% today, and in the past week, it is down. So I feel like I am getting a discount, especially especially after the ex-dividend date when that share price drops the same exact amount as the dividend that they're going to be paying in December and January. You could see that they were able to almost recover before today's drop. So you could see they paid that dividend. It was up to $21 per share, dropped down to $19.90. It would have been a decent entry point here, but I've seen a switch in the market where I believe that the Russell 2000 will actually go up pretty substantially in the year of 2024. And that's why I'm going to be buying into this ETF because this ETF obviously tracks the underlying Russell 2000. And if the Russell 2000 goes up over the year, this ETF should stay flat or have less nav erosion over the next year while being able to pay out that 72% dividend yield. So you can see in December 20th, they were just about ready to break even with their last payment. So you see 2102 on November 30th, and then on December 20th, it was at almost $21. And then today we had quite a bit of a drop. So that's okay. And then over the max time, this ETF is up. So you could have bought on inception day at $20 per share, and then you'd be up to $20.52 per share. And then their lowest point, was December 6th, $19.86. So we'll see exactly what happens with this ETF in the future, but I'll show you guys exactly why I think there is a big gap between the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000 currently. So I did some research on the correlation between the Russell 2000 and the S&P 500, and there's actually a correlation between them. They could have periods of significant outperformance slash underperformance relative to one another. As we've seen in 2023, the Russell 2000 hasn't done as well as the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So small caps typically outperform large caps during a period of economic turbulence. You can see the dates here. Large caps often outperform in the later stages of bull markets and during the strong phases of economic expansion. Since 2014, the S&P 500 has been rebounding versus the Russell 2000. So it hasn't done as well since 2014. And I, if they're highly correlated, that means there should be some equilibrium eventually in the future. Small cap stocks have been especially hard hit during the pandemic and 
Russell 2000 has had a lower weighting to technology stocks than it does in the S&P 500. So what I've seen in the past few days, and I've been saying this for quite a few videos, is that I think there will be a rotation out of the technology stocks and more into some value plays, mid caps and small caps. And I think that'll help boost up that part of the market. I think we're too overweight in the Magnificent 7. And that reason is those stocks have absolutely flown up in 2023. People are going to start taking their profits and putting it into more of the beat down ETFs and stocks that are on the lower end. And as you can see, that's been happening with REITs and banks and value plays. Those stocks are starting to go up at a much higher rate after the announcement that they're going to cut rates in 2024. So you could see this shift starting to happen. And I think it's a good time for me to get into IWMY and still continue with my high dividend portfolio. Also see some growth in my portfolio as well. And let's take a look at IWM, which which is the Russell 2000 ETF, the S&P 500, and QQQ for the last year. So you can see IWM is still underperforming the S&P, and QQQ is up 51.8% this year. So obviously, IWM has been underperforming the other two. But as you can see here, like, like I was saying before, in the past, let's see, let's go into the past month, you can see IWM is up 9.54%, and the other two are lagging behind it because we're starting to see that shift. And I think this will continue in 2024 and beyond. So we go back to the one-year chart. And then in the three-year chart, you can see IWM is only up 2.91% compared to the other two. And then five years as well, IWM's up 48.91%. S&P's up 93%. QQQ has been absolutely killing it, 168.67%. So I believe there'll be a rotation out of some of the NASDAQ 100 stocks and into some more of the value plays and small caps. So that's why I believe that IWMY will be a good investment for my portfolio in 2024. And I think their distribution rate will continue to go up because if we do see a massive year in the Russell 2000 for 2024, they'll be able to use their option strategy effectively and be able to capture more and more income with their strategy and be able to pay out higher distribution rates. But the higher the distribution rate, well, as we've seen with Kony, it doesn't really matter because the underlying can absolutely fly high but with more of an index these indexes can't go up as much as like a single stock in a day but it is possible i know the russell 2000 can easily go up two percent in one day these etfs like to go up between 0.3 and 0.5 percent on the highest day that they're available they get capped at that amount so say the russell 2000s up two percent for the day this etf will only be up about 0.5 to 0.6 percent depending on what strikes they're using and their options trading but i've seen the cap and let's hope that the russell 2000 could go up maybe one percent per day and then have very low red days so that's my reasoning for buying this etf in 2024 let me know what you guys think of this thesis of course nothing in this video was financial advice i'm just showing you exactly what i'm going to be doing with my portfolios and i'll of course keep you guys updated along the way so thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and found value, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.